um, facial animation. The essentially the overall message of uh, today's webinar, the overall thing we're going to talk about is kind of combining uh, motions uh, from different sources. So we're going to do some mocap uh, of my face. Uh, you're going to get to see my face again, unfortunately. Uh, but we're going to see my face, uh, mocap from the facial uh, uh, mocap using Motion Live. We're going to do some, uh, we're going to take some motions from Mixamo. Uh, we're going to blend those mi uh, motions in Mixamo um, in iClone. And we're also going to uh, edit them, uh, refine them, and combine them all together with other iClone motion tools. So today's webinar is essentially mostly about motion, uh, mostly about animation for both body and face. We're going to do a lot of facial animation as well later on. And uh, finally, we're going to be uh, kind of just uh, streaming into LiveLink uh, just to show you how that works. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, um, since LiveLink is one of the uh, one of the coolest things that we've come out in the last uh, come out with in the last little while, I recommend getting yourself familiar with it. Um, anyways, okay, so welcome uh, to the webinar, everyone. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a brief outline of what we're going to cover. Um, as always, we are recording this uh, this webinar. So if you have any questions or if you if I go through anything too fast. Uh, we'll be sending out a video link afterwards, and you can go ahead and uh, review that on your own time. Pause, rewind, fast forward, make my voice sound like a chipmunk, um, whatever you want to do. Uh, so we're going to have that uh, later on. Uh, we'll send that to you guys as well. Um, in addition, we're going to be sending out a survey for this uh, webinar. So if you have any, any comments, any suggestions, uh, we really welcome any feedback you guys have. Um, please put those, uh, those comments in the uh, survey. And as a little reward for you, we'll send you a 10% discount from the content store coupon. So you can get a little, little discount for uh, your next little content purchase there on the content store. Um, all right, and again, we get, we're all gonna have a Q&A session at the very end of the webinar. So for the last, um, we, we say 10, 15 minutes, but it normally stretches to about at least half an hour. So we'll have a little Q&A session at the end. Um, any questions you have, put that in the Q&A uh, window there in your Zoom panel. And um, we will, uh, I will get to that um, at the end of the webinar. Um, and you can put that in there anytime. Uh, we won't be using the chat window really. I may use the chat window later on to throw some links in there and stuff. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, I think we'll go ahead and get started um, without further ado. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a brief preview of what we're gonna kind of have by the end of this webinar. This is just, uh, we currently have uh, Unreal Live Link uh, set up here with our iClone. Um, um, and basically, I'm just going to be doing a little bit of a facial animation. Uh, we're going to be covering the, the body animation first. Excuse me. And we're going to cover the facial, the body animation. We're going to save the body animation separate from the facial animation. And then we're going to combine the facial animation. So we're going to do a lot of like animation surgery, I guess you can call it uh, today. It, uh, I'm going to give you a fairly detailed overview of the uh, motion tools in iClone uh, along the way. So if you're interested in that, uh, I recommend that. Keeping tuned here. Uh, okay, so I'll play this back here. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? All right, so basically what we've done, we've just linked uh, some really basic stuff in uh, iClone with Unreal. We've linked, uh, of course, the character. Come on, punk. And the camera movement. What are you waiting for? And uh, the uh, just one light as well, okay? But we're not going to we're not gonna um, worry about this right now. We're going to get to this eventually uh, later on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to my normal view in Unreal here. We'll go ahead and close this down since we, uh, we don't need it at the moment. And we're gonna start of all places on the Mixamo website, all right? So Mixamo.com, in uh, case you're not familiar, if you have an Adobe uh, membership, you can get uh, free access to these thousands and thousands of motions um, from uh, Mixamo. Highly recommend doing that. Um, you know, even just get like a $10 per month uh, uh, Photoshop membership or something like that, and then you have access to all of these uh, all these things here. Let's just go ahead and close this. <laughs> uh, we'll uh, close this for now too. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do because I, I get a lot of questions from people asking me, you know, hey, how can I take my Mixamo motions into iClone? How can I, um, you know, use that with uh, Unreal Live Link in Unreal? Um, so we're just going to answer as many of those questions as possible <laughs> during this webinar here, and I'm going to do a, a couple of motions. Um, just some really basic ones here. Uh, we should have some uh, some punching ones here, uh, if I can find them. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe, uh, I think they're on the first, they should be on the first page normally. I guess they've changed the order of these uh, motions. Oh, there we go, punching right here. This is one of them we're gonna be using, okay. So this punch one right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. You can see fairly standard punch. Um, 
and we have a taunt. So I'm just going to search for taunt here. Um, this is the taunt we're going to use. I like this is the one right here. Okay, so kind of like looking at the time. And uh, I think the, the line that I said was, come on, punk, let's do this or something. Uh, what are you waiting for? Come on, punk, what are you waiting for? All right, I'll have to remember that. I'm bad at remembering my lines. All right, so let's we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we can use like either taunt. We can use whatever taunt we want again. Um, so I'm going to give you a little hint here. When you download from uh, Mixamo, um, what you want to do is go ahead up here to the top right and select download, of course. Now, you can download without skin, but a uh, funny thing that if you download with skin, you're actually going to save yourself some time. And I'll show you why in just a moment. So uh, we're going to go ahead and download this as an FBX with skin, OK? With skin just means it basically has this uh, this mesh, this pink uh, character mesh along with it. OK, you can see I've already downloaded a couple um, since it's uh, two in parentheses there. OK, you just right click and show it in the folder. And it'll appear there right there. And there's your taunt, OK? Now, I've, I've saved all these into a separate folder already. Um, I've saved a taunt, and I've saved a punch. Let's go to here. OK, so we have a, uh, a taunt uh, boxing motion right here, a taunt. And we're not going to use the looking around. We're going to use this boxing one here. So I'll just show you it just in case, just to give you a little preview. OK, so I think this punch is a little bit cooler than the other one. Kind of gets a bit, little bit more of a, um, this one here has no steps, just kind of a jump forward. Okay, so this is the one we're using for this uh, for this uh, webinar here. Okay, and again, just do the same thing. Download FBX, and you have your FBX. All right, so that's really all we need to do in Mixamo, and um, we don't need to have Chrome open anymore, so let's go ahead and close it, all right? But one thing we do need to have open is 3D Exchange. Um, I like to launch my stuff from the Reillusion Hub these days, so I'm going to go to my Reillusion Hub and just open up uh, 3D Exchange 7 here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kind of getting over a little cold here, so my voice may be a little bit uh, um, on the mend. Um, okay, so what we need to do here is we need to import in our motion, our FBX motion, uh, complete with the uh, um, uh, skin and everything like that. Okay, so you're going to see here, right here, this is the taunt. Uh, we can just click, drag that in into 3D Exchange, and it'll come up with this. Uh, we'll just go ahead and press OK. Uh, just make sure you have all these options selected. And it's going to automatically analyze it and detect that, hey, it's a Mixamo default character. So we don't have to do any of the uh, characterization. We don't have to do any of the bone retargeting. It's already automatically done for us. OK? We've had this for quite a few years in, uh, in iClone and 3D Exchange. So it's a really use useful feature. Um, if you have 3D, uh, sorry, 3D Exchange, 3DS Max, biped characters, uh, my human IK characters, um, uh, what else do we have? Daz and Poser characters. It's going to be a one-click characterization. Um, you don't have to um, do any bone retargeting for the motions. Okay, so on the right side here, you'll see your animations. Okay, in the motion library, it automatically adds the first ones to your perform editor, which is where we want to have them. Okay, um, your motions need to be in the perform editor before you export them. Just keep that in mind. Uh, so we can just you know double click on any of these. And you can see the preview, all right? Now, the reason I said this saves time from using it without skin is because if you if you download the Mixamo Motion without skin, you're going to have to go into the um, um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba, uh, characterization. Uh, you're going to have to convert to non-standard character. When you click that, you're just going to have to kind of set the T pose and everything, which you know it takes a couple minutes. But um, and because these meshes are not very um, not very large. I think this one is about two megabytes. If we mouse over it, yeah, you can see it's two megabytes. OK, and I think the motion by itself is like 500 kilobytes. You're not really, um, you don't have to really worry too much about the size of these uh, these motions, obviously, or the mesh, rather. OK, um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, we're going to import in another one here. Uh, we can go to import. And we can import in uh, you know the looking around and the boxing. I'm just going to import in the boxing one. You can import in multiple motions at the same time. I'll show you that just in case here. So I'm going to control, click on boxing and looking around, but I'm only going to ex import the two, okay? Uh, which is the the taunt and the boxing, okay? So it just comes up with this characterization profile. Make sure it's the same character, okay? Since we already set the Mixamo rig, and press OK, and OK for the second one as well, and those are going to appear in your motion library here. Now keep in mind that the ones that you want to export are the ones that actually have length. 
these ones that only have one one frame for length are just the uh, kind of the test poses or the uh, zero poses if you if you might uh, for the uh, for the character. You don't need to export these. You just need to export the um, the main one. So you can just delete this from the perform editor. This one right here, um, this taunt. Uh, we'll select the uh, boxing mixamo right here. Okay, and we can just uh, add to perform. All right, and another thing you want to do here is you want to make sure you name these properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click in this perform editor. We'll just call this webinar taunt. We'll do underscore for Unreal here. Webinar underscore taunt. And uh, oops, played that accidentally. And webinar underscore taunt. All right, good enough. Okay, so that's really all we need to do in Unreal. Uh, or sorry, in Unreal, 3D Exchange rather. So we have these two in the perform editor. From that point on, just go up here to export to iClone. You can also use the Control E hotkey. Just go ahead and click that. And uh, now we don't want to export the geometry. Okay, the geometry is the skin of the character, the, uh, the nice, nice pink uh, skin, which we don't really want. We'll just go ahead and export animation. Uh, you can call them the file name, whatever your file names you want. Okay, so we already set those as webinar taunt, webinar punch. Let's save this into the folder called webinar in our uh, iClone custom content folder and press OK. OK, successfully exported. Success. All right, let's just go ahead and close that down and into iClone now. Um, so in iClone, let's go ahead and start a new project. We don't need this project for now. Uh, I do want to import in my character, though, the uh, fighter character. This is some really cheap looking uh, boxer character that I put together in character creator in probably two minutes. <laughs> um, but he does have, he does use, utilize um, skin from the uh, Elite Characters pack, which is a pretty cool pack. And if you want to find out more about that, I can uh, give you more information later. He's a street fighter. He's got like raggedy old shorts and stuff like that. Okay, anyways, we're going to apply the motions to this guy. Um, so let's find the motions first. They, are, they will be in our content manager, in our custom folder. Let's bring this over a little bit so we can see a bit better. And we're going to go into our uh, motions right here, motion tab, uh, custom. And we should find under motions, we should find a webinar folder right here. Okay. And in webinar folder, we find our webinar taunt and our webinar punch. Okay. So we're going to start off with the taunt. Obviously, he's going to taunt before he punches, or he could punch before he taunts, but we're going to do this uh, by just double clicking the character or double clicking the motion. And he'll uh, get into this. Uh, taunt motion here. So we can go ahead and play that back. It's time for a knuckle sandwich. That's even better line. Anyways, okay, so there's webinar taunt. And if we want to see that um, in the timeline, we can press F3 and go into our timeline here. And uh, I'm just going to hold Alt and scroll my mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. So we can click and drag in this upper area here to see the um, scrub do the motion right there. And after he's finished that motion, anywhere after here, it doesn't really matter. We can move the clip. We're just going to go ahead and apply the webinar punch. Okay, so with the webinar punch selected, or with the webinar punch applied, you can see here that we have uh, all this stuff um, uh, all together. So it kind of blends together the taunt and then the webinar punch. Now, there's one small thing that um, I, I know a lot of people always ask me about. Um, if you pay close attention, let's uh, focus on the area in question here, which is the uh, right uh, rear uh, foot here. Uh, pay attention closely. So this little area right here where my mouse cursor is right now, that's the transition area. So um, this area right here where it's kind of surrounded by a nice bright green um, outline, that's the transition area. Now you can move this transition area, you can click and drag it to extend it as long as you want. Um, but I think in this case, it doesn't really matter. It's this this um, length of transition is just fine. Now, take a look from here to here, we have that dreaded foot sliding, okay? So even though those two motions are probably meant to be together seamlessly uh, in Mixamo, there is still a little bit of foot sliding. So we do have to correct that foot sliding. Um, the way that I correct the foot sliding is fairly simple. Um, what I do is I just go into uh, the props here, uh, the set tab under uh, props, and I just throw in like a little uh, 3D block of a sphere or something like that. And I've probably done this in a bunch of webinars in the past, but I just apply it to uh, the scene. And I press the R hotkey to scale it down since we want to be smaller, about the size of the heel right there. I press the W hotkey to move it. And I normally just put it kind of where the character's heel would be. 
Okay. And I'm just going to right click and uh, remove the animation since we don't want it to be scaling and everything in our, as we scrub through our timeline. Uh, so I'll select the character and you can see from here, again, let's just click this uh, uh, clip to see from here to here, you'll see is what will slide, which kind of, you know, uh, it's a small, small thing, but honestly, uh, to fix it is quite easy. So all we need to do is just make sure our character is selected. And I'm going to go over to the modified tab here under motions or under our animation tab rather and use our edit motion layer tool. Now I'm going to select my character's uh, right ankle there. Okay. And uh, all I'm going to do here is just um, what I do is I cheat a little bit. I just kind of move it like a very slight bit like that. And when you move it a slight bit like that, if you twirl down your motion tab or uh, track there, it's not uh, twirling down. Should twirl down. And let's see if we can close that down. Uh, weird. Okay, well, it should add a keyframe there. I should, I'm, I'm not able to, to uh, twirl this down for some reason. Oh, there we go. Well, it's still not twirling down. Uh, let's go here. I found discovered a little buggy bug. All right. Anyways, oh, there we go. Okay, well, that's a way to do it. Okay, interesting. Now I can twirl it down. Okay, uh, so um, there we have this, uh, the keyframe that I added right there when I moved the, the uh, leg. Okay, let's go back into our motion layer tool. And um, let's zoom in a little bit closer on the foot here so you can see. And okay, so it added the keyframe right there at the very, the very first frame of the transition area. So what we wanna do is move to the very, first frame of the clip, which is right here. Okay. And we want to take that foot and move it back into position. Okay. Which will be right about here. Okay. So now if we have from here to here, you can see he's kind of taking the weight off the foot a little bit because he's punching forward, which is fine. Okay. And so, but now the foot is in the correct position. And if we zoom out, let's close our timeline down just to get a, a nicer view of it. Uh, if we zoom out, pay attention to the rear right foot. It's time to stop foot sliding. All right, and then uh, there you go. Okay, so everything looks fine and uh, we've corrected that foot sliding. Now, um, another thing I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna do some uh, kind of a little bit, bit of motion key editing as well to emphasize our punch. Now, um, to emphasize the punch, uh, again, the punch is right here from uh, from let's press F3, go into our timeline here from frame, let's say, uh, what is this frame? 208. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is edit motion layer tool. Now, like I mentioned before, sometimes I cheat and I just press the, uh, I just move the, move the bone ever so slightly. I'm going to press the E hockey to rotate. So note when I do move it like this, just even ever so slightly, it'll add all those keyframes down there. Another way to do it is just double click in the, in, the, in the timeline itself and it adds that uh, keyframe as well. Okay, so if I just uh, control Z that and I just double click here, it'll add a keyframe for basically every single part of the body, okay, including the fingers. Um, so that's another way to do it. Um, and then from here to here, uh, I think that punch, he's not really following through on that punch enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make that punch a little bit further in. Uh, we're going to just kind of bring it up like this. That's more of like a follow through. That's how you punch. All right. So um, you can see there, that's a bit more like it. So now he, we have it for back here and he does a nice swing and a hook. And then um, what, he want, what we want to do here as well is um, because when he gets back to the regular position, his hand is going to be kind of in his chest, which looks a little bit dumb. Okay. He's like, I don't know what he's doing there. But uh, what we want to do is before that happens, so maybe about here, we want to double click in the uh, timeline again under the motion layer track, add an absolute key. And about here, we want to go ahead and press reset. Okay. And reset will just make basically what reset does is it reset takes it back to the default uh, position in your, in your timeline, in your uh, uh, clip. Okay. So then we have this punch follow through. And there we go. Okay, you can move these keyframes around a little bit if you think it's too much or the, the timing's not smooth or anything like that. Okay, so uh, there we go. Boom. All right, and it moves a lot faster. Now, 
Um, there's a couple of ways that you can um, use your, uh, let's close down our edit motion layer tool for now. There's a couple other ways you can emphasize that punch if you wanna make it seem like it's a slow motion punch, like a really cool, like kind of punch or something like that. I don't know why I did that sound effect, but uh, you can make it from, from here, for example, to here. Uh, what we can do is we can uh, click on our absolute key. We can right click on it and go to transition curve presets. Now, um, I'm not gonna get into too much detail on, on the, I mean, we can use the curve editor as well. If you have the curve editor plugin, you can go to plugins and curve editor. Okay, but I'm just gonna use a simple um, example here. Uh, you can basically do the same thing in the curve editor. If you wanna learn more about the curve editor later, you can just ask me, um, but we can right click on our keyframe here. This is for people who don't have the curve editor. You can use transition curve presets, okay, which are pretty cool. Um, and if we use this kind of like gain momentum before we move, clip or right here, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have more of like, it's gonna be, it's gonna kind of give a bit more of an oomph to the punch, okay? Uh, we can also, you know, move this back a little bit to kind of emphasize it a bit more. Um, let's try another one here. Let's try like, uh, um, and in a bounce, okay? So this one, it'll kind of just, uh, we need to make sure that we have it on the specific uh, um, part of the body as well. But basically these, these transition curve presets allow you to adjust the amount of movement like ease in and ease out between, uh, you know, one keyframe to the next, okay? And the, the end of the bounce one is probably not the one we want. Let's go ahead and use the gain momentum before move one. I like that one, okay? Uh, and with that one active, we can have a bit more of a dynamic punch. Okay, boom, like that. And he moves back. Um, if we want, we can adjust his head. Um, maybe his head position is a little bit strange. He's not really even looking where he's punching. So another way to do that, edit motion layer tool. Let's just um, use a, a default key here or reset. Okay, so just basically just um, is exactly what I had before, but, but we can't do that. We need to keep the foot position. So we need to actually take the head and take the head and kind of move it to this direction. Another way you can really uh, do this easily is you can use the, um, look at feature, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, but this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. And um, the head stops here. So what we need to do is, if you want that head position to remain co consistent throughout all the uh, keyframes, what you need to do is you need to copy that keyframe, right click and copy the specific head keyframe and paste it, okay? Here, you'll see it, it'll, whoops, paste it in the wrong frame there. Okay, what's going on here? Should be able to paste. Or right, if not, we'll just take it over here. Fine, be stubborn. Okay, and then maybe it's a little bit too far. So he's looking now and then he's gonna be like, whoops. So we'll, I, here we'll just adjust it slightly. And oh gosh, did the wrong, wrong frame again. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. And uh, make sure that head position is a little bit forward as well. And then there, I think we'll kind of, from there to there, we'll just make that position uh, correct again. All right, I don't wanna to spend too much time on the head head position, but I think that looks okay. Wow, like that, okay. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, before we get to the facial animation is we're just going to throw on some uh, um, puppet editing or some uh, motion puppet tool editor. Um, so we have our character, you know, he just finished his punch. He's basically knocked this guy out. You know, he's in good, good position right there. Let's delete that uh, sphere since we don't need it anymore. Um, what I'm going to do here is we're going to throw on uh, an idle at the end. We're going to go to our modified tab, uh, animation and motion puppet. So if you're unfamiliar with motion puppet, it's just basically a tool that allows, it's really good, really useful for looping stuff. Um, like like idols or talking motions or or what have you. Okay, very useful for NPCs in your game, uh, um, background characters and stuff like that. Uh, you can even use it for for um, you know uh, main character conversations as well. Um, but for this one, I'm going to go ahead and use an idol, and we're going to use this boxing idol. Now, if I select that boxing idol and I preview, I press preview and press space. Notice that hey, uh, that doesn't really work because. Um, his legs are totally changing position and it looks pretty stupid. 
um, he's not going to be able to do that very fast. So a way we can do that and keep the position of the character's hips is go to the mask tab and just mask out the hips. Okay. In case you're unfamiliar, the hips are basically where, uh, you know, the most of the movement is going to come from uh, the direction of your movement. So if you have the hips masked out, your character is going to stay in, in that profile. Okay. It's not going to turn like 90 degrees when you preview. Okay. So now we have this. Oops. Okay. So we have, uh, it turns like this now. Okay. And of course you can just kind of move that down a little bit and we can go ahead and record maybe uh, a few seconds of this. Okay. So now he's, you know, ready to take on the next guy. Okay. So he goes like this. Now he's ready to take on the next guy. And if you want to be like really picky, um, um, you can go ahead and you can see his, his left foot will slide. Okay. His right foot will remain planted and pivot, which is okay. All right, but his left foot will slide. And if you if you want, you can kind of like lift the foot up, okay? So a way to do that is just easily, again, using the edit motion layer tool. Um, let's move this down a little bit since we don't need all that space. Let's take this out of the way. All right, there we go. Okay, so what I'm talking about is from that transition to this transition here, the his left foot now will, uh, will slide. Okay, we can probably make that a little bit longer. So what we need to do is from here, again, we can just press a uh, uh, reset. And basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna add a keyframe right there. And then from probably midway, we can probably just lift his left uh, ankle up a little bit, almost as if he's taking a step, okay? So like that, that's another keyframe. And then the first keyframe of the next clip, we can just go ahead and press reset. Um, Oops, we need to, uh, it's a different clip now, so we need to take it all the way back down. And uh, then we need to take that and place it back down on the ground. And you should have foot contact on in this case, which will be helpful. Let's go ahead and do that. So foot contact, there we go. Okay. Then we can tell when his foot hits the ground. Um, okay, so motion, edit motion layer tool and foot contact. So, don't want to slide, slide that much. Okay, good enough. So now we have this step. Okay. And that's good enough for me. Now, uh, what we can do here is we can collect that clip and any, any, any other modifications we want to make, we can uh, uh, do that as well. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and collect the entire clip. Um, generally, what you want to do before you do this is just save everything in case you want to do any edits further on. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead, we can uh, right click all these clips. We can right click them and we can select a flatten motion clip. Okay. And what that'll do is that'll flatten all the parts and basically just removes all of the, uh, the keyframes there. Okay. And we can right click and we can also select, uh, the, the merge clips here. Okay. We can merge them all into one single clip and just delete. We don't need to worry about these, uh, keyframes here. You can just delete those. They're just kind of, uh, anomalous. Uh, clips, so or anomalous little keyframes there. So then we have this. Okay, so what we can do is just uh, it's time for lunch, and then punch, and then you're done, and the next guy. Okay, um, and uh, you know I, I didn't really do, do 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 too much detail about the motion puppet tool. There's a lot of other stuff you can use in the motion puppet tool. If you want to learn more about it, you can really customize any of those idles or any of those loops and stuff like that. Um, okay, so that's how you have that. And if you want, you can right click this. Um, there's a, no, a number of different ways you can uh, save this. You can save the clip right here. You can import. Um, I mean, there's tons of stuff that I don't really want to get into in this at this uh, point here. But we can like save the clip like this. We can save it as an RL motion. Okay, so it's just going to only save the body. So an RL motion is only saving the body, but an R. Um, uh, but, 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 but motion plus is that, that's what I'm talking about. Motion plus will save body and facial animation. Okay. So I'm going to save this. Uh, I'll just save it as test motion, RL motion in our, uh, excuse me, our Unreal 2 IC7 to Unreal folder here. Doesn't really matter. That's the previous one. All right. Now, the reason I'm doing uh, the body animation and facial animation separately is because um, with a motion like this, where your character is like, you know, head is moving. He, you see, you can see his head is shaking. So if we were to do like facial motion capture, like, like this, for example, um, it's kind of hard to get a result, um, a very detailed result because his head is always moving. His body is always moving. So, um, generally what, what I, 
uh, tend to do in this case is I tend to just um, use the body and, and facial animation and kind of combine them separately. And I'll show you how to do that uh, right now here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, delete that clip. He's gonna go back into a T-pose, which is just fine, okay? We can press the J-hotkey. Uh, the J-hotkey allows you to zoom directly to your character's face. Okay, so here we have our dude. We're ready for some facial animation. Um, I'm gonna bring up my face and then after, after I'm done the facial capture, um, I'm going to just load up the Unreal Live link and we're going to see the, uh, the facial and the body animation together um, as live in Unreal as we do it in iPhone as well. Okay, since I don't want too many windows open at, this, at the same time. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our desktop here, load in real time for iClone. And this is the facial animation. I'm just going to do some, uh, you know, really silly uh, facial animation. There's me. Oh, let's get my eyebrows in place there. All right. Um, again, I like to try to use natural natural lighting. It's still a little bit early here on the West Coast, so we still have some sunlight. Um, but the, again, first thing you want to do is move your uh, facial features around. One, make sure the tracking is okay. Okay, natural even lighting. Tons of tutorials if you want to check out on on uh, um, facial mocap with iClone. Um, basically, what we, what we want to do here is calibrate neutral pose, so we give myself a very neutral expression, like a passport photo. Okay, and now it's calibrated, and I can go into iClone, and we can go to plugins. Again, you need the Motion Live plugin to do facial motion capture, and I can select Motion Live, and there we go. All right, so this is our Motion Live uh, panel. We're going to select Faceware Real Time. Okay, so again, these are all gear profiles. If you're unfamiliar with our Motion Live plugin, it basically is an aggregate uh, the aggregate plugin that allows you to, to combine. Um, motion capture from all industry standard devices, basically mo most of them, you know, like OptiTrack, uh, Perception Neuron, uh, XSense, um, all these Rococo, all these different um, um, uh, different tools, uh, basically we support all of them, all right? So, uh, and there's a lot more coming in the future as well. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go ahead, uh, with use select face for real time as our gear profile. Um, our character is selected, his name is Fighter, all right? Pretty cool name. And we're going to go ahead and select face and we'll just choose face for real time. Okay. Um, now you probably want to see my face and this guy's face at the same time. Uh, so we don't need that stuff here right now yet. So let's just go ahead and um, throw this somewhere down here. And there's me. Whoa. Okay. Um, so let's move up a little bit uh, to reposition everything here. I don't want my face to take up the whole area. <laughs> okay, so let's leave, leave, leave it right here. Okay, so um, boop, 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 boop. I think we're good. So again, if we just preview right here, press the space key. Hey, hey guys. Tilt my head from side to side. Why, why? Okay. Um, now sometimes what happens, particularly with this character, you can see his eyes are fairly small. Now, a lot of the time with this character, even though my eyes are fairly large, um, let's go ahead and recalibrate just in case. Okay, um, his eyebrow or his eyelids seem to be like, you know, kind of going down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the eyelids on my little uh, masking um, image here, and I'm going to remove those. So now you can see that um, basically it's removing the eyelid uh, motions and I have my character, um, the eyes, I mean, we do still have the eye clone automatic blinking, which, uh, you know, just, if you want to cancel that, there's ways to cancel that. But um, that's, if you're having eyelid, eyelid troubles, that's kind of a quick way to fix them. You can mask out anything. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to actually take two run throughs here. I'm going to uh, record audio live um, with, the, with the facial motion capture. And I'm also going to record it onto a, a separate uh, program, uh, Audacity, into a separate audio file. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started first with recording our first uh, run through. Okay, so what did I say? Um, oh gosh. <laughs> hey, punk, it's time for lunch. No, oh. it's time for a knuckle sandwich. I think that was the last one I did. Let me find that audio so I can just remind myself. Um, oh, here we go. Sample audio. 
Let's see. Come on, punk. What That's are you waiting All for? Right, come on, punk. What are you waiting for? Oh, gosh. Let's get out of here. Okay. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? All right. Oh, and I pressed space there. Okay. Let's get back to uh, making sure everything is okay. Calibrate. All right. So let's go ahead and record that. Uh, now we're going to record audio for Visine track as well. And what this is going to do is this is going to record some audio directly to our timeline. And I'm going to re-record this using a different software later on. And I'll, I'll show you that as I run through it. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do this. Come on, punk. Whoops. Uh, something went wrong there. Let's go back to the beginning here. Um, let's make sure we have everything set up here. Well, maybe have to uh, relaunch the motion live. Okay, let's recalibrate here. Recalibrating is just a ha habit that I have. Motion live. There we go. Reconnect it. Should be okay. Wow, there we go. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and record. Um, record audio for Vising track. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? Okay, so uh, there you go. We have some uh, mouth movement, uh, some expression on the character's face. I'm going to show you how we can emphasize that later on. Now, again, you can also go to strength here. If you find that you know certain uh, parts of your face are not strong enough, the result, you can emphasize them by increasing the strength here. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that um, because we still have some facial animation um, editing to do. Uh, so I think, you know, let's go ahead and play it back really quick. Um, come on, punk. What are you waiting okay, for? I think it's pretty good. It's like just natural. It's not too exaggerated. So I'm going to just get my face out of here. Bye, guys. And uh, we're going to close down Ocean Live uh, tool. And the rest of it is going to be um, uh, facial editing in, uh, in iQuote. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, load up those windows again. Uh, we want the content manager, scene manager. So F4, F5, F6. Um, those are the hotkeys, by the way, F4, F5, F6 for the content, modify and scene manager. You should probably uh, know those. And then plugins, um, Unreal Live Link, we're gonna have that as well. Um, I think right now we can load up our, uh, our um, Unreal project in the background. So let's go ahead and get the Epic Games launcher going. And I'm going to show you uh, how to import all that stuff into Unreal Engine as well later on. Uh, I'm just going to load up our uh, demo here, demo project. And OK, so let's take a look at the what we have here. So I'm going to press F3 and go into our timeline. Now, if you're not familiar with the timeline too much, I'm going to close down the project. We don't really need that. Um, let's uh, we'll open, close down, transform. We don't need that. Uh, we don't need motion since we're only doing facial editing. Okay, so all the motion tracks here are only for body. Okay, just keep that in mind. So if you're not doing any body editing, you can close down the motion just to save space on your timeline. Um, and just go up to the fighter little arrow down here. And Visim and Expression are the ones that you want to uh, load in for, for facial animation. Constraint, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll load that later when we do the look at, okay, the camera. Okay, so we have this. We have the um, puppet clip, the Visim, um, twirl that down. So the Visim uh, tracks, we have the audio um, wave, wavelength here. We have the uh, keyframe for the lips, and we have the lips options track, which allows you to, if we right click, we can smooth, we can adjust the clip strength on different parts of the lips. And uh, any questions you have about that, we're not going to deal with that right now. Any questions you have, you can ask me later on. And then we have an expression track, okay? Um, which is basically the, the motion clip for the face, I guess is the best way to, to, to describe it. Uh, okay, so we have this. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? Okay. Now, um, because I was kind of like looking around when I, when I did that, I wasn't really looking at the, uh, at the webcam directly. You can see the character's eyes are kind of wandering a little bit, which doesn't really make sense if he's talking to somebody. So let's pretend he's talking to the camera, which is us, okay? So I'm gonna go up to the uh, create here and we're going to create a camera. And I'm just gonna go to my scene manager here and there's my camera. 
let's just call it the main cam. Whoops, <laughs> or man cam. That sounds even better. Main cam. Okay. Um, so main cam is the active one right now. Let me just move this stupid zoom thing out of the way. Move it down there or down here. Okay. Um, yeah, main cam is the one we're looking at. Okay, we want to have our character look at main cam. So uh, to do that, let's go to modify and uh, to our attributes here, um, we have to have our character selected. And uh, what we want to do is we want to say look at and look at camera. Okay, so the character is now looking at main cam. Now you can, you can adjust the weight. You want only the eyes to look at the camera or you can have the whole head looking at the camera. If you're doing facial motion capture with head movement and rotation and stuff, I'd recommend mostly focusing on eye uh, weight. Okay. Now we accidentally did this at frame 86. Um, so I'm going to load up the constraint track here uh, under fighter. When I mentioned earlier, the constraint track here, and you can see at the bottom here, uh, the bottom here, there's the keyframe right there for constraint. If we twirl that down, uh, and there's this long line here uh, to look at. Okay, so it starts here. We'll just go ahead and click and drag that to the very beginning. So he'll look at the camera for the entire time. Come on, punk. What are you okay, waiting? So let's play back now. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? Okay, so no matter where we rotate the camera, he's going to be looking at the camera. A uh, very useful little tool, um, especially, you know, for, uh, oh, we just animated the camera accidentally. <laughs> I forgot we have a camera. Uh, okay, so that's that's that anyways. So he's he's looking at the camera. We can get rid of the constraint the entire time, okay? Um, so we don't need to worry about the constraint track anymore. Now, um, we need to do some facial key editing here. Uh, for that, I'm going to change the preview since we're not animating anything. Okay, and let's zoom in on our character's face. Now, the reason I mentioned um, uh, recording the audio uh, separately is I'll show you in just a moment here. If we zoom in on our character's face really closely here, um, let's play it back really quick here. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? I mean, to be honest, that the lip syncing looks fairly good. But that's because I, I was talking fairly slowly um, and I was talking fairly clearly. I, I made a point to kind of really emphasize my mouth movements. Um, I found that in, in certain scenarios, if you have a character talking really quickly, like basically the speed that I'm talking right now, um, it's going to be a little bit difficult uh, a lot of, in a lot of cases for, for the motion capture, uh, for the camera to keep up. And you're, you're going to get some, it's, excuse me, it's not going to be as accurate. Like you're not going to get a lot of the fuh, like especially, especially the fuh. That's why I wanted to say, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? So here. For where the fuh 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 sound is, that's not really the sound, the, the shape that a mouth should make when it's making the fuh sound, okay? So um, one, one little restriction uh, with the facial motion capture is especially when you're using like ma or fuh or something like that, with lips combined into you know, a, a plosive shape, then sometimes it will not be as accurate as it should be. And you, you can, you can uh, edit this using the, the expression, uh, um, using the musculature of the face, okay, using the facial morphs. But I've kind of find it, to be honest, easier just to use the presets, the phonem presets, which are the ones in the lip syncing track, okay? Um, and I'll show you what I mean here. So if we go to, uh, da, 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 da. So make sure our project is loaded up here. Okay, good. Um, if I go to my uh, expression tab right here, and say I wanted to, you know, edit the, uh, the, the facial expression of my character. Um, the way I do that is go to our uh, uh, modify tab under uh, animation, and we go down here to face key. Okay, now where are you saying fuh? What are you waiting for? Fuh, 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 fuh. Okay, so fuh right here. Now what we can do, I mean, it'll, it'll take some time, but we could, you know, take our lips and we could, you know, modify the lips. Uh, like this, bring it up a little bit so it may, maybe looks like his uh, his teeth are showing a little bit. So that's more of a f. Okay, uh, we could take this uh, lip uh, and, and and close it a little bit. So that maybe looks more like a f. Okay, so f f f. Maybe take the cheeks in like this. Okay. Um, uh, whoops, we have an additional selection there. 
so maybe something like this um, and take the chin up a little bit. Okay, so again, you can see it takes a little bit longer and you have to go through like, you know, various uh, morph shapes to kind of modify that. Uh, and uh, yeah, sometimes it can take a while and you have to go into the modify tab and adjust everything. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of a, a way that I, I like to a little work around. Um, if you find your, your um, lip syncing is not super accurate, uh, I'm gonna delete that keyframe that I created there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up uh, Audacity which if you don't have Audacity, I believe everyone with a computer should probably have Audacity. It's like a free tool um, for audio recording, audio, audio basically everything, um, editing. And I, I use it like all the time uh, for various projects. But um, what I'll do here is I'm just gonna record my, my system audio um, in Audacity and that's gonna record my, my playback from my iClone scene. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this back. Or we'll go ahead and record first Audacity. So make sure that you have, um, your, your uh, recording device set to your speakers. Okay, um, yours may be different, but this is mine. Um, then just press record and we can go back and play. Come on, punk, what are you waiting for? Okay, um, so we have that. And if we go back into Audacity, there is the audio right there. So volume not, volume not entirely high enough. Uh, the, the levels are pretty low. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? So the first for? thing I'm going to do, um, just to get rid of all the background noise, is uh, just select a little area here, go to effect, and go to noise reduction. This doesn't have anything to do with iClone, but uh, it's a really quick little easy way to uh, get rid of background noise. Select get noise profile, and then press control A to select your entire audio clip, and press noise reduction again, effect noise reduction, OK. And then to get the levels up, go to effect, and go to amplify. Um, or sorry, uh, effect and go to uh, normalize, which basically normalizes up to a certain level. I recommend negative one decibels. Okay, and now you can see. Come on, punk, what are you waiting for? Okay, we still have a little bit of background noise, so we can do the, repeat the same process, okay? Again, I don't wanna spend too much time explaining this since it's not really iClone related, but uh, effect noise reduction and okay. And then what I do is I just select the area that I don't want, control X, to cut it, select the area over here that I don't want, control X to cut that, and file and export. Export is MP3, and we'll just export it to our, uh, um, let's go to uh, the webinar folder we had here. Um, webinar. And we'll just call this uh, sample audio. Okay, and it saves that. So we have this. Come on, punk. All right, so then we have an audio file. Um, and the audio file is created from our original recording and has the same speed, same intonation, same everything as our lip syncing, which is very useful. It's gonna come in very useful in just a sec here. So let's go ahead and press, uh, we'll close that down. Now what we can do, um, notice that basically right now your all the keyframes in your Visine track are useless. All, all the keyframes in, in the lip track here, they're useless. If we select this one, double click, we change it to an ooh, okay, something like that. Nothing's going to change, all right. That's because the expression clip, the puppet clip in this, exp uh, the puppet clip in the expression track rather, overpowers anything in the Visine tracks, okay. So we're just going to go ahead and delete the entire Visine track. Let's go to the frame where we start. Um, okay, so this frame right here is frame fifty-seven. That's where he starts talking. Come on, okay, it's going to be useful. Um, I'm going to remember that. So we'll go ahead and just delete that. All right, now we have the exact same thing. Come on, punk, except there's no audio. So now we can add in that audio. So let's go to frame 57, uh, the frame that we uh, um, started at, frame 56, whatever, doesn't really matter. And let's go to create script. Okay, we can create a script using an audio file, which is the audio file that we just saved. Um, that is on our webinar folder there. And do, do, do right here, so sample audio. Okay, so now we have the same thing. You can see now the, the wavelength, uh, the wave is uh, a lot larger and uh, the, the sound is a lot better, so. Come on, punk, what are okay. you waiting for? And now we have that audio that can, uh, those uh, lips uh, keyframes that we can modify and adjust 
to kind of emphasize on top of the expression clip. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. Punk, so what are you waiting a... for? Okay, so that four right here, what we can do is we can double click that and change it to a fuh, okay? And we can change the expressiveness, okay? So that's more like the the um, the lip shape that you'll have when you make fa 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 sound with your lips, okay? And you can adjust the expressiveness. And you take the expressiveness down. It's going to be using more of the, um, uh, I guess, more of the morph shape from the puppet clip in the expression track, okay? However, if you take the expressiveness up, it's going to be using more data from the um, automatic lip sync, all right? And I think that you know, if you have a very clear clip with very good audio, the automatic lip sync normally does a fairly good job. And we are making you know, very drastic improvements to that in the near future here as well, um, and probably in this, in this year 2020. Okay, so then we have this. Come on, punk. What are you okay. waiting so for? Pretty cool. Um, I, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, then you can do a lot of other things, but I don't really have a lot of time here. So I'm just going to go ahead and combine the two. And we're going to show it in the Unreal Live link, OK? Um, a couple of things I wanted to do before we moved on. Um, uh, I want to make sure that we have the uh, camera selected that we want, main cam. OK, so we're, we're always looking at that camera. And I want to make sure that we have that camera not animated at this point. Um, main cam, there we go. Select it here. We can uh, twirl up the visine shapes now. Uh, for main cam, you can see, holy smokes, all the animation we put in there. <laughs> okay, let's just go ahead and delete all that stuff. Junk. There we go. Okay, so um, with main cam selected, uh, we're going to have, uh, let's go ahead and throw this into Unreal now. And then I'll, I'll show you how to combine those to uh, the body and the facial animation. So what we can do at, at this point here, um, uh, Come on. Let's first of all, before we do that, I want to show you a little, little bit of a quick uh, facial keyframe editing. Um, so, see, for example, our puppet clip, we don't think he's angry enough. Okay, this is going to take two seconds. Uh, let's go to our uh, modified tab with the character selected, obviously, and go to uh, facial key. And we did a little bit of facial key editing before, but the, we have these expression templates, which are pretty useful. I use them all the time because I'm pretty much a lazy animator. Uh, and just choose like a expression template, like angry, for example. Okay, and then we can just choose like, uh, you know, um, whatever frame we want. It's gonna appear in the muscle track here. Um, let's just go ahead and use angry one. All right, so those as a little keyframe in the uh, muscle track, angry one. And that's gonna last throughout our entire puppet clip. Um, now we can adjust that expressiveness to a little bit lower if, you, if we think he looks too angry. Okay, maybe let's do like 75% angry, all right? And then at that point, we can also take the uh, muscles and let's do something like scrunch the nose a bit more. Let's zoom in first. I probably shouldn't be using our main cam for this, but it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so let's take our nose there and uh, scrunch it up like this. We can take that and scrunch it. Um, maybe take the uh, inner eyebrows here and just uh, bring those down. We can take the outer eyebrows and uh, bring those kind of up a little bit. Okay, just kind of general ways you can create more anger on your character. You know, flare the nostrils a little bit, um, take the edges of the mouth down. Okay, there you go. Now he's looking a little bit angrier. And I just kind of want to show you that you can do that. Okay, so basically, you know, um, layering on top of that uh, uh, facial um, mocap that you have. Uh, if you want to emphasize it even further, you can go to the Modify tab and you can you know, adjust the levels of, of these particular sliders as well, these particular morph sliders, okay? So for the eyebrows, say we don't think the eyebrows are raised up far enough uh, on the outer side. So we can just take our outer left eyebrow, raise that up, outer right eyebrow, raise it up, um, so on and so forth. Um, say, for example, um, as we move along, Come on, punk. As he's saying, what are you waiting for? Let's go ahead and do a little animation where he's going to raise one eyebrow, OK? So I'm going to double click in the muscle track. That's going to add an absolute keyframe. So what let's, have him, what, 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 let's raise his, uh, uh, let's deselect symmetrical selection. Let's raise his uh, right eyebrow there. OK, maybe it's a little bit too much. We can take the other ones down a little bit. 
Okay, and at the same time, let's uh, take the uh, left side down. Okay, so that means from here to here, we're gonna have that eyebrow raised. What what you, so as he's saying, what are you waiting what for? What what we're gonna raise that eyebrow. And however long we wanna keep that eyebrow raised, we can right click on that uh, keyframe right there, copy it, and what are you waiting? So as he's saying that, let's just say he wants to raise his eyebrow for the duration of that uh, um, quote, whatever you wanna call it, and <laughs> just paste that. And then we can go back here and take it back down to uh, the regular uh, level. So we can take this keyframe, the original keyframe, copy that, Roger, copy that, and paste it over here. All right, that's gonna bring his eyebrows back to normal, basically. So we have this. What are you waiting for? Okay, uh, let's take those a little bit further down. And then we can probably extend the uh, eyebrow descent, so. What are you waiting for? Okay, and there you go. Just a little, little, little subtle addition there, where you can, uh, you know, add that your own little kind of touch to the to the motion to the uh, raw motion capture uh, in various ways. Okay, so now we're happy with this. Uh, we'll say we'll say that I'm happy with this. Let's delete that keyframe in the main camera. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect the clip track. Um, so to about here. So this is basically all we need to collect from here to the beginning. So with the collect clip track open, I'm going to left click and drag in the collect clip track. I'm going to right click and we're going to select add motion plus to library. Okay. Now, very, very important here. If you don't do this, it's not going to work. You want to make sure that you deselect motion. Okay. So if you recall, motion is for the body. We're only going to export the facial animation. Okay. Visibility, spring state morph, it doesn't really matter. We can add those. It doesn't really matter since we don't have any he doesn't have any hair, so there's no spring, springy hair. Excuse me. Uh, does have a, well, you need to have the morph stuff. Not really any morph animation here either. We'll, we'll keep it anyways. Just go ahead and press OK. And we'll save this as, um, yeah, we'll save this as our come on punk facial animation. Let's we'll overwrite the one I previously had. OK, there we go. OK, so now that we're, we're done that, uh, what I want to do is maybe just uh, see how this looks in my Unreal project. So I'm going to um, load up my Unreal project really quick. We have a couple more minutes here. Um, and go into, ba -da -ba -ba, let's just go into uh, a regular old map. This is our third your third person uh, um, Unreal project, by the way. All right, so we already have the dude loaded up here. Um, if you want to learn more about how to like import your characters into Unreal, uh, it takes a few minutes. So I didn't really want to you know, waste your time uh, waiting for the Unreal project to load in there or the character rather to, uh, to load into Unreal. However, stuff like cameras and and uh, um, uh, lights, that's the word I'm looking for, cameras and lights, uh, import in no problem, all right? So uh, what I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna link up uh, this to Unreal. So let's go ahead and uh, have our character um, um, loaded into Unreal here, or rather in, in iClone. Uh, we need to go up to our Unreal Live Link plugin, okay? If you don't have it open, I'm reliable link right here. Um, free for qualified indie studios at this moment. So make sure if you're an indie studio, you uh, check out, uh, apply at our website. Um, and da -da -da -da, go to link. Make sure that link is activate, activate link. And then it goes link activated. All right. Uh, so we have all this stuff linked up. Uh, we go to transfer. Now we don't have to transfer anything. Generally, uh, you're, the step you want to take is you want to transfer the files. And that'll import your files into Unreal, okay? But because we already have this basically linked up, um, what we need to do is in Unreal, let's just make sure that we uh, maybe load it up to here. Um, or, okay, let's just make it larger first. Okay, so you wanna go to your Live Link tab right here and go to Source. And for Source, you wanna select Icon Live Link, okay? And that's gonna load your Icon Live Link. And because the character has the same name, as a character I previously loaded it in, it's going to automatically snap to, all right? So now this character is automatically linked, all right? And you can see here, if I scroll through, well, let's just go ahead and uh, play back here. Let's press F11 actually to take him into uh, uh, the larger view here so we can kind of move around, whoops. Um, now the camera's not imported yet, so I'm gonna show you how to import the camera. Um, let's just play this. My Zoom webinar panel is getting in the way again. Play this back. 
Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? Okay, so that's basically it. Um, we can uh, take this project link a little bit further back. Okay, um, so the next step uh, is to, uh, let's just do the uh, body animation first, and then we'll do the uh, the camera and the uh, lighting in Unreal Live Like. All right, it's gonna take uh, two minutes here. So very easy to, um, to do that. Uh, generally, what I wanna do before this is just kind of save my project though. So let's go ahead and file save project as um, come on, facial, come on, facial. That's fine. So we'll just overwrite everything I previously did in a practice run. And uh, let's um, have our character here. Um, let's go back to our preview camera so we're not moving the camera around. And there's our other camera. Main camera. Let's make it invisible for now. Yep. Let's take our character and let's apply that body animation, which should be in the content manager under animation under custom. And what did we save it as? Da, 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 da. We saved it as injured idle. What did we save it as here? Oh, we saved it to our folder, right? Uh, we saved it to webinar folder here. Uh, this test motion, uh, I believe it was this one right here. Yeah, that seems like the only one. Okay, so we can just right click our character. We can remove object animation, whatever. Uh, he has no more animation on him. So let's go ahead and apply that body animation to the character. Okay. So here he is doing his uh, taunt and then punch and then turning to the next guy. Okay, so uh, this part here is where we want him to have that facial animation. So, you know, maybe we'll start at about this point right here um, where he's reaching for his, uh, pointing to his non-existent watch. Uh, we can go to motion plus. I believe we saved this as, as motion plus. Um, where did we save it? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Did we actually save that to the folder as well? I believe I saved that fighter. Oh, that was a motion plus. So it should be in custom motion plus, unless I saved it to the desktop, maybe. Oh, man. Looking around. All right, we have to save that really quickly just one more time. I'm not sure where I saved it to. Let's go ahead and uh, in that project. This is why you save your uh, save your projects. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that really quick. It won't take too long. And uh, generally, what you want to do is you want to layer that motion plus on top of the uh, on top of the body motion. And that should be just fine. I don't want to spend uh, too much time there, just kind of wandering about. Well, let's just change our preview cam here. All right, so click, clip again, same process. Add motion plus to library, everything okay. And uh, we save it as this webinar icon 7 Unreal. Oh, I must have just not seen it in the folder. Okay. Apologies for that, guys. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Um, really quickly repeat that process. Move object animation and load that uh, test motion. Oh, it's this one right here. I didn't see it when it was right in front of me. I knew I saved it there. Okay, so apologies for that. Um, so we're gonna have him talk starting out right here. So let's just go ahead and at this point here, we'll load in that uh, facial animation. So right here, come on, punk facial animation. And there you go. Come on, punk. What are you waiting right, for? A little bit late. <laughs> so let's go into our, press F3 into our timeline and take our uh, facial expression. Let's take it to the very beginning here. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? All right. All right. He punches a little bit early, but uh, well, that's that's fine and dandy. All right. So we, we basically, I just want to show you how you and basically save the motions separately and throw it on top of the facial facial animations and throw it on top of the body animations. Um, now we have to relink in uh, Unreal here. So, um, ba -ba -ba, source, let's just trash the last one here. Uh, scene character. Uh, we need to have, make sure we have live link active. 
activate link and back in Unreal, use iClone Live link. There you go. Okay. So again, make sure the naming is consistent and everything should be fine. Now uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how to transfer those cameras in really quick. And then we, I promise we will get to the, uh, the uh, Q&A in just a moment here. All right. So I think no animation on that camera. Oh, there is. Okay. Right click, remove object animation. Let's change to camera view. All right. So camera, let's, um, at this point here, let's maybe do something like a uh, view like this. Come on, punk. Uh, maybe a little bit higher. Just make him look a bit more intimidating like this. Okay, and we're going to have him look at the camera. So again, uh, you can go to modify, do, 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 look at camera. All right. And we'll use more of an eye uh, weight. Okay. So let's, let's show this um, um, simultaneously in Unreal. And the way we do that is we need to export the, the camera. Okay, so let's go to our Unreal Live Link, uh, transfer uh, this main cam. Okay, this is the one we want to export. We can also select the uh, um, other camera, but let's select main cam and just transfer files. Okay, so what this is going to do is this is going to transfer the camera over to our Unreal project. And then we can see the exact same thing happening in Unreal and in iClone. Okay, let's take a second here. Cameras don't take that long. Well, they shouldn't anyways. Um, and then, if, of course, you can uh, import lighting in as well. Um, but yeah, so we'll get to the Q&A section right after I show this. Uh, and so if you have any questions right now, um, please throw those questions into the Q&A uh, uh, panel there. And uh, I think maybe something went amiss here a little bit. May or may not have gone amiss. Um, but uh, I'll start looking at the questions here and answering questions as, as, uh, as I'm waiting for this to load. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. Yeah, okay, let's just do that uh, since it seems like it's uh, maybe stuck somewhere. Okay, so um, uh, question, first question was from Ferris. Uh, Rivers mentions, are you guys ever going to use Android phones for facial animation? Uh, yes, uh, we, we do have plans to support um, Android in the future. However, we uh, Apple was the first um, company we worked with, um, you know, to do uh, facial animation for them. And uh, there you go. There's our camera. It's finally working. Uh, but yeah, Android is, is in the future, and it's just a matter of you know getting all the stuff uh, prepared. Um, and uh, but it, it is in, in in process. I can't really give you a timeline for that though. But that is something that we are uh, are working on at this point here. Um, okay, so next question um, from Faith Based Games. I noticed you got an error message when using Live Link. The error message for UE4 uh, is that a bug? Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm actually this just started happening for me. I think with the last iClone update, which is the one we added Smart Gallery. Um, you know, so sometimes when you when we update the program. Uh, it adds, you know, um, things in another area. It can also, you know, mess up, you know, certain things in another area. Oh, you know what I forgot to, what I did here, guys, is I actually um, imported the character and everything at this, uh, as opposed to just the, uh, just the camera. Um, so I'm going to cancel that. Um, I may have just kind of screwed myself over there. Um, Let's see if the character. Let's just kind of load up our project again. <laughs> no wonder it was taking so long. I was loading up the. I was transferring all the files and not just transferring the uh, the camera there. This is the file. This is the issue that he was talking about. Yeah, I, I do get this. So this is something that will probably fix in the near future here. Um, close with sending. Close without sending. It doesn't matter. It actually still uh, works, uh, which is weird. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can just load this up again and uh, reestablish that link without overwriting things. Um, OK, so let's, let's take a look at the animation we want to do in iClone. Um, well, that loaded up fast. OK, let's load up that uh, map really quick here. And uh, yeah, so our character is got to be in here somewhere. All right, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to 
make sure our link is active um, right here. Yeah, make sure that the only the things that you have want to transfer over are selected here in the transfer window. Otherwise, you're going to mess up like I did. Uh, OK, so then uh, RL content here. And we do have the, uh, oh gosh, see, just over, I, I selected to overwrite the guys. So I guess we might as well just uh, import everything back in here, which will take a while. I specifically save this project to avoid that, but I ended up transferring and then canceling. So now it's gonna take another few minutes. So let's answer Q&A. Uh, and then once this finishes transferring, uh, we will uh, get to the uh, this process here that it's going through right now. Um, okay, so next question um, from Rodney Hill. I'm looking at a fo fo foliage bundle on sale at Real Illusion. Would I be able to get them to work with wind in Unreal? Um, it really depends on which foliage bundle. Um, if it has like mesh and uh, I've never actually taken foliage from, from real illusion into unreal because actually I think, you know, uh, stuff like speed tree um, and other foliage unreal has in, in its, in its default program are actually quite good. I mean, unreal is, is, is a game engine that has you know, been built on first on first person shooter, um, foundations and uh, a lot of them have you know great fo foliage uh, trees flowers whatever you have um, you can take those into into unreal um, as to whether or not it would work with uh, with wind and unreal I haven't I've never actually used wind in unreal myself um, so I can't really comment on that I've, I've used it in, in iPhone for sure it works but unreal um, I would have to assume that yeah it should be should be fine there should be a way to do it um, and if not, you know, Unreal in their marketplace and actually built into their program, they have tons of really good uh, uh, foliage as well. Okay, so uh, just to, as a as an aside here, what's happening right now is it's actually transferring the full character uh, along with all the animation data and everything and, and the textures and everything. The textures are really what take the most time, even though this character is fairly simple texture wise, that takes a long time to, to, to transfer in. Um, it's like when you when you bring in an FBX character into uh, Unreal Engine, you have to you know, consolidate all the textures, make sure everything's set up. Thankfully, we do that for you uh, with Unreal, so you don't have to do all this nonsense that's happening on in the in the background. <laughs> it just takes a couple of minutes. Um, okay, so question from uh, Brahim Maksud. I'm upgrading a laptop. Um, is iClone compatible with AMD's Ryzen CPU? Uh, the CPU is, is fine. The CPU is not really the issue when it comes to uh, to running iClone. Here's another thing we were mentioning earlier. Just go ahead and close it out sending. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, the, the, the CPU doesn't really matter that much, but what I do recommend is using an NVIDIA card because most of our most of our video card testing is done with NVIDIA and, uh, you know, um, if you want to, you know, have the best results, I recommend, you know, just using that. Uh, that's probably my best, my best answer there. Um, I'm just going to quit this right now, really quick here. I'm going to delete all this uh, stuff here that we have uh, in iClone. Um, since it imported all those lights, we don't need to have all those extra lights. Um, let's just use the uh, side light here. Uh, so we have main cam imported in. We have fighter imported in. Camera. Okay, let's make sure we pilot camera. So right click on it and pilot camera. All right, so now it's going to be um, the main cam. And uh, which cam is that? Let's make sure that's the same camera I selected. Nope, it is not the same camera I selected. So um, maybe this editor active camera. No, this one here, main cam. All right, there we go. That's the one. Oh, great. May have had a little camera issue there as well. All right, fantastic. Let's just like the fighter and focus on him. I think the camera's, is this the camera we're using? I think we have to uh, re-import that camera in. Let's just delete all this stuff and uh, Get it out of here. And focus on our character here. All right, so if you're in a situation like this where you're like, hey, um, 
let's 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 create a light uh, and a camera. So um, I'm just going to show you how to really quickly import in the camera and the lights. So um, let's create a new camera um, and let's call this uh, in our C manager. Let's call it uh, stupid cam because this is a stupid problem. All right, and stupid cam. We're going to start right here, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and. Uh, Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? Uh, maybe from here, let's just uh, um, make a little keyframe. And then here, we're just going to like zoom out like this. And he's, he's still looking at main cam, unfortunately, but whatever. No biggie. So then we have this. Come on, punk. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? Okay, so uh, let's export stupid cam into uh, Unreal Live Link. So again, do not select the cameras. Do not select the fighter. Um, we can import a light in at the same time, actually, if we want. Um, let's just import in the key light only. There we go. And transfer those files. That would take just a couple of, uh, maybe not even a couple of minutes. That should transfer. All right, there's stupid cam already. Um, right. Oh, we have to like uh, link it up. There we go. <laughs> now things are starting to uh, starting to come together. Right click stupid cam and pilot stupid cam. All right. Now, when we modify our position of our camera in iClone, it's also going to modify in Unreal. There we go. Okay, so playback. Here's what it's going to look like in Unreal Engine. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. And scooch over here a little bit. There we go. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? All right. And he trans, you know, it's kind of convenient that he actually went to the other side. All right, so that's basically it. And then if you want to import in our key light, uh, our key light, I believe, is in there somewhere. Um, maybe the key light didn't import, but that's fine. As long as the camera imported, I'm happy. <laughs> All right, let's get to the Q&A since we're kind of like late on the Q&A now. All right, so John uh, mentions here, thanks for the inclusive pipeline. No problem, John. I'm here to help you guys. Uh, when it comes to scenes and interaction, I think Realization is planning on adding prop scene transfer into Unreal Live Link. That way you would be assuming that correctly. Um, how would you recommend editing animation for interaction and blocking? Is there an easy way to transfer scenes to Unreal or Unreal to iClone so things line up correctly? Um, so we actually just are just started working on a webinar that's going to be at the end of next month. Um, that's going to be basically talking about exactly this. So we're going to be talking about um, you know, character interaction and blocking scenes and stuff. Uh, that's going to be in, in the end of March. Um, and of course, yeah, we, it's, it's really easy to transfer that into Unreal. I'm not sure if we'll have prop import and stuff into Unreal at that point, but uh, we will have the same cameras and the same lighting. Um, so that'll be, uh, we'll basically sh show how to block a scene in iClone. Just a really brief interaction between two characters. Excuse me. And, uh, and bring that into, into Unreal Engine. Um, in terms of, uh, yeah, sitting on a sofa or picking something up that may not be available at that time, but we are we are working on getting props as well into uh, Unreal Engine. I don't have a specific timeline for that right now though. Um, all right, so um, hopefully that answers your question there, John. Um, so Mick here mentions, can you demo facial capture with iPhone? Um, I, I can, I don't have an iPhone handy right now, Mick. I've actually transferred over to Android, dun, dun, dun. Um, but uh, yeah, iPhone iPhone capture is essentially just as good as Faceware. I have people asking me this all the time. Um, I've used both um, plenty of times in the past. And to be honest, if you already have an iPhone 10, um, the gear profile for the iPhone 10, uh, it's called Live Face, is actually a lot less expensive. So I, th I think it's you know uh, maybe 40% of, of the cost of of the uh, faceware one so um obviously they if you if you don't have an iphone then you'd have to buy an iphone um yeah uh, so that's that's uh the way it goes but 
I, I do I do like working with the iPhone because it's, it's, it's very accurate, especially for plosives because the iPhone utilizes a depth cam. That's what it's called. It's very good at sensing depth. Um, so when you move your lips out, like a, like a, like an Italian chef or something like that going, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the iPhone will do a little bit of a better job at capturing that, uh, the lip extrusion, I guess you can call it. Um, okay. So, uh, Mick also asks is face real time workflow the same for iPhone. Yeah. Workflow is exactly the same. Uh, it's just whether or not you prefer one or the other. Um, I, I like both, to be honest. Um, if you don't have an iPhone handy, um, the webcam facewear works just fine and dandy. Uh, I find that iPhone works uh, excellent as well. So I can't really give a preference on that aside from the plosive issue. Um, but be aware that if you use iPhone with the with Wi-Fi, uh, you, may, you may encounter a little bit of lag in certain uh, cases, um, particularly if your project is uh, fairly large. Um, so I do recommend, you know, when you do your facial animation, try to do it with minimal background resources. And what I mean by that is make sure that you don't have tons of lights, tons of other materials in your scene, because that'll just basically lag down your CPU and your GPU. And it just um, takes away resources from, uh, you know, other stuff like, like uh, facial capture. Uh, okay, so let's uh, get to the next question here from Julie Le Lemoyne. Um, yeah, okay, so the, the audio is maybe a little bit uh, on the East Coast is a little bit um, uh, lagging. So apologies for that. Uh, we do try to get the, the best audio quality we can. Um, however, sometimes, uh, you know, there's, uh, when we're broadcasting to so many people, there's a little bit of uh, lag here and there. Um, but I do try to get the, I do have the fastest at, fastest internet possible to uh, X to uh, upload this uh, uh, content to you guys. So um, yeah, apologies uh, for any any audio lag. Um, if you do encounter that, you can always just watch the recording as well um, on YouTube and hopefully see things lined up there. Um, okay, let's move on to the next question then from uh, Ray. Is there or will there be a way to link vehicles and their animations from iClone into UE4, helicopter rotors, Humvee, wheel turning, etc.? Well, Ray, I have some really good news for you actually, because um, the way that we're, we're the direction that we're going with with iClone um, as the new versions come out in the near future here is we are trying to make it as easy as possible to animate. Uh, we're, we are going to be releasing even easier ways to animate. Um, almost like moving your character through a video game. Um, uh, we're going to allow, you know, preset, uh, preset animations. Um, like you mentioned, for example, a character getting into a helicopter, all you would have to do is press a button and that would activate, you know, your character, um, you know, walking over to a helicopter and, and walking to the helicopter, um, from various poses, from various positions on the map. Uh, it's all going to be done using, uh, artificial intelligence, similar to, um, what you would look at in a, in a blueprint uh, in Unreal. So, you know, in a blueprint in Unreal, uh, animation blueprint rather, you're going to be, you know, press F if you want your character to pay respects or something like that. Uh, or press J if you want your character to jump. I'm not sure if any game has J for jump, but um, it's going to be similar to that in the future. Uh, and that's going to be easily transferable into Unreal Engine because everything is going to link uh, totally fine. Um, so hopefully, yeah, you can look forward to that. I guarantee you, uh, by the end, by the end of 2020, you'll see a lot of that stuff, um, being incorporated into iClone. Uh, so Michael Moralejo asks a good question here. Can you transfer hair and clothing physics? So unfortunately the thing with, uh, with, uh, hair and clothing physics is it doesn't transfer, um, with FBX files. So we're using kind of FBX linking um, from uh, iClone into Unreal Engine. The only way you can transfer uh, hair and cloth physics into Unreal from iClone is using um, Alembic files. So if you're not familiar with Alembic files, uh, they also contain uh, soft cloth physics data. And you can, you can transfer those. Um, that's basically the only way to transfer clothing and hair physics at this time. Or you can, you know, do the, do all the physics stuff in Unreal, 
Um, but in terms of transferring from iClone to Unreal, uh, there's not really a way to do that right now, but we are working on that as well because that's that's a that's a common request. Um, so Michael Richards asks, does the same workflow work with Unity instead of Unreal? Um, we don't have Unity Live Link right now. We are in discussion with uh, them to to get that uh, to get that made. Um, so that's going to be in the future. We are we are working on it. I can tell you for sure. And Unity Live Link will be available, um, hopefully, hopefully this year. I think um, mid this year. Uh, we're still working on it, like I mentioned. Uh, it's just a matter of of getting the the correct permissions and everything to uh, from the, from the team over there to um, to get everything done. Uh, but yeah, that is that is in the in the uh, pipeline for uh, product production, uh, rather production map for the for our products. Um, let's go to the next question here from. Anonymous attendee. So you, anonymous attendee says, I missed the earlier part of the live link connection. Um, my connection has error messages. Um, what I would recommend doing is checking out if, if you have, because I don't want to go through the whole process right now. Um, I would re recommend checking out um, the website. There's a whole bunch of tutorials um that uh, my good friend eddie christian has, has done that uh talk all about this you can go to the main product site for unreal engine live link go to learn and go to tutorials and i'll throw this in the chat one for you guys in case you want to check it out um here we go uh, okay so that's in the chat window there hi to uh from arizona hi to everyone <laughs> Uh, okay, so just, uh, yeah, take a look at that. Um, tons of videos that'll cover basically anything you want to know about uh, Unreal Live Link. Uh, so Toby Johnson asks, can Icon Vehicles animation be transferred to Unreal? Yeah, that's something we're working on, not at this time, but it is something that's going to be, um, again, with props, being able to import into Unreal, uh, that's something that we are working on and that will be done by the end of this year, guaranteed by the end of this year. Uh, more more than likely in the very excuse me in the very near future. Uh, so anonymous attendee also asks any ideas if the base plus would be free. Um, so the base plus, I'm not sure what you mean by the base plus. So maybe you can kind of uh, elaborate on that a little bit, and I'll get to that a little bit later. <laughs> so another question uh, from Luis: What's better, Faceware or iPhone Motion Live? Um, you know, if, if, if I was, um, let's say an indie, indie studio owner or something, or had my own indie studio and had an iPhone, I'd probably go for iPhone, um, motion live just because it's cheaper. Um, but if I didn't have an iPhone, I was, you know, vehemently against, uh, iPhones, uh, or all Apple products, then I would probably go for, for faceware. Um, they're very similar. Um, I find faceware, maybe the lighting is a little bit more picky. Um, but if, as long as you have a great lighting, again, natural, not, not even natural, just, um, a uniform lighting that doesn't cast too many dark shadows and it's not too bright or not too dark, a face wear performs fantastic. Um, iPhone maybe have a little bit of an advantage in lower lights and light, lower light situations in my experience. But, uh, again, I've also en encountered, you know, like, uh, slight jittering, but of course that can be fixed, um, with iPhone um various ways you can do that um but again <laughs> if i was a, if i was the guy with the with the with the iphone i'd probably go for the iphone um live uh live face just because it's a lot cheaper uh if money was an issue if not why not get both <laughs> um all right any question uh next question story rather is uh peter but asking um any more news about having support for connect mocap system um we don't have any any goals uh anything in our product pipeline right now uh for for connect um for the body unfortunately just because of because of the limitations on on you know 360 motions and everything and people these days everyone wants 360 motions and um but yeah i mean we do we do still have support for connect obviously um but it's not going to be uh updated in the near future as far as i can tell Okay, so um, Michael Ricks asks, what is the game engine powering iClone 7? Is it proprietary? 
Uh, yeah, basically it is uh, proprietary. Um, we do have plans to open up our our uh, our software here to uh, for plugins. So we're going to be basically um, opening up all of iClone uh, for basically for people to use plugins, uh, um, Python plugins, uh, and it's not no longer going to be proprietary. Possibly in the near future, I can't really comment on when this is going to be or if it's going to uh, happen for sure. But uh, we do have the the plan to open up iClone in, in the near future as well. Um, so Rodney asks, can we maybe see the animation you import in the Unreal sequencer? Um, yeah, I can show you quick uh, the this, this sequencer in Unreal. Um, so let's go back to the beginning here. Uh, if you're not familiar with the sequencer, guys, um, it's just kind of basically records the, uh, the animation. Um, that you have a uh, sequencer is right here. So we can just go ahead and add a sequence. And uh, what I do is press record as soon as I'm ready to record. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that and then quickly go over to uh, record. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? All right, so and then we need to go back and stop it. All right, and we can open our recorded sequence right there. And here she is in the sequencer. Oops. I need to uh, select the track there. Um, what did I do wrong here? Should be showing up in my uh, project here. Oop. Did I? Uh, not sure why it's not playing back. Oh, we have to change the camera, I think. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oops. All right, so that's in the sequencer, anyways. I'm not super familiar with the sequencer, and I think maybe I did something wrong there, but. Uh, there is a project in the sequencer. Normally it shows up in my uh, active pilot there. I think I need to mess around with the cameras a little bit, but uh, yeah, the camera should be adjusted. Let's see if we can, we asked the one. Oh, anyways, there it is in sequencer. <laughs> I'm not a, not a sequencer pro as you can tell, but that's how you get into the sequencer. And that's your uh, recording right there. Um, maybe I messed it up here. Anyways, um, yeah, apologies for that. I'm not much of a sequencer guy. Um, let's go into the next uh, question here before I look like too much of a fool. Uh, Luciano asks, how do, how do you work with the pose library? Um, so poses are pretty simple. Um, any pose you have an icon, you can save into your pose library. Uh, really easy and simple to do. Let's go to your content manager, uh, motion custom, and uh, go to like gesture right here and, and plus. And there you go, gesture, blah, 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 blah. Right, so there's that gesture. That's the, basically like a pose, all right? So uh, for, the, for the hand, rather. Um, and then for motion, you know, any, any pose you want to save for the motion, uh, let's go into our timeline here. And uh, I like this pose right here. Um, basically, you want to just save a couple frames. Same way in a collect clip track like this and just save it, whoops, like that. And add gesture to library, add motion to library. Okay, and it'll just be a pose basically. All uh, right, um, well, let's go to the next question. Where's my Zoom panel? There it is. Yeah, so um, I kind of I showed, showed a little bit about, uh, you know, mixing poses one post to the next. It's basically just about using that transition area that I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, you can create transition clips and mix them together. Uh, but that's kind of a whole nother uh, can of worms that I don't really want to open right now. Uh, okay, so different question from Luciano. I just realized that there's a few of them. Uh, uh, so given an animation clip, is it possible to save only the upper body poses and animations? 
Um, so yeah, this is one thing that I've really wanted for a long time is just the ability to save, um, you know, animations for only one particular part of the body. Um, but unfortunately, the only way of separation that we have right now is the face and the body. So, you know, I've always wanted to say, hey, can I apply, like do a Frankenstein animation? Can I apply the, the left hand animation from this character and the right hand animation from this animation and the hip animation from from this animation you know all, all into the same character um but unfortunately that's that's not possible at, at this time uh i'm not sure if it will be in the near future but that's something that i would like i would love to do because i'm like i said I'm kind, of, I'm kind of a dr frankenstein of, of uh mixing animation clips together and just finding things that work especially when you're doing like you know freelance projects or something where you're on a timeline you just take something from mixamo and then or you know from our our, our icon library and, and just customize it throw something totally different on there uh, and combine it with other stuff. Um, one thing you can do is you can remove remove animation from certain parts of your body, um, but you can't apply specific animations from specific clips. Uh, you can't apply a specific body animation, body part animations from clips uh, to a character to mix with other animations, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so not uh, entirely possible right now. The only the only separation available is between body and face. Um, okay, so uh, Stephanie asks, will this work the same with Unity as Unreal? Um, as soon as we get our, our Unity uh, live link uh, set up, that's going to be just fine. Um, like I, I mentioned a little bit earlier here. Uh, let me just get to the next question here. Okay. Um, oh, I see. <laughs> uh, will that be a plugin or an update? Uh, I'm I'm certain that the uh, Unity Live Link will probably be um, a plugin, just like uh, just like it is with uh, Unreal here. Um, okay. So Vladimir asks, what's the maximum scene? by the number of polygons that can convert from iClone to UE4. Oh man, um, you know, that really just depends on your computer resources, to be honest. Um, I've done some really, from some really big stuff before. I've done some really small stuff. Um, from iClone into UE4, I mean, I've done multiple characters at a time. I can't really tell you the max. Um, what I can tell you is that as, as soon as you, you know, see your computer slowing down and then you may be reaching your max because the maximum uh the maximum scene capacity for is going to be different for different computers um so again it really depends on your computer i can't give you a solid answer on that uh vladimir unfortunately and but i, I have had multiple characters in a scene without without single issues so uh, and i'm i'm on like we're currently i'm on like a, a laptop i7 uh gen uh H series Gen CPU with a GTX 1070 NVIDIA uh, GeForce, so nothing, nothing too tremendous. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, next question here. Uh, anonymous, anonymous attendee asks a question here: Is it correct that I need to buy both Live Motion and Faceware to do this? I've just got about everything, but uh, Faceware costs quite a bit more than using Live Face. Yeah, so this is a you know a good comment like I mentioned earlier. Um, you, you do have to have the Motion Live plugin. Um, again, that's the kind of the, the hub that allows you to really uh, customize um, or rather to really capture animation from all the different hardware. Uh, that's something that you need. And then the the hardware that you use is totally up to you. Um, like I mentioned, I, I I can recommend both for different scenarios, but uh, if you do have an iPhone the iPhone one is a lot cheaper, uh, less expensive for sure. Um, Rodney asks, I get this question all the time. Do you know any iPhone head mount products? And you know, if any of you guys have like an uncle or a, or a, a grandpa out there or something who knows how to like, you know, weld and, and, you know, jerry rig something like this together, they can probably make millions selling it on Amazon because, uh, I haven't, I mean, every, every person that I know that has um, their own head mount, uh, they've, they've pretty much done it themselves. Uh, one of my good friends has actually just did one recently with a bike helmet and a, and a, and a GoPro uh, like selfie stick thing. Um, just kind of jerry rig it together. Um, because the funny thing is, those head mounts out there right now, they're sold by the professionals, 
are gosh like way overpriced if you want my opinion um uh your best your best guess is to your best option is to probably just um you know jerry rig one yourself together i've seen people do all sorts of things like there's those ones where you have um it's like a shoulder mount uh it basically it's almost like a, a curve curve that's like mounts on both your shoulders and and there's a, a stick that face extends forward on both sides of your head and allows you to you know your camera there that one's really good for stability um because it's not uh mounted on your head it's mounted on your shoulders and it has a kind of like a neck brace thing and uh you know those two kind of um pillars going like poles going directly forward and those kind of hold your uh, your iPhone in in place, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, Rodney, I, I I just the last time I looked for this, I looked I looked in earnest, like I, I looked fairly long, I looked for about an hour, and uh, I I didn't find anything that that I I felt was was priced worth it, um, you know, is within a hundred, like hundreds of dollars, um, you know, even up to like a thousand or or, or you know more um, for 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 a head mount. You know, and, and of course, those are like, you know, well tested and, and uh, everything like that. But I think um, for a lot of people, it's kind of out, out of the out of their range unless you're, you know, more pro professional production studio. Um, so, yeah, I can't really give you a solid answer on that one. Um, OK, so. Although I'm staying asked mentions here, the base plus that is part of the release is coming up to the character creator as shown in the 2020 roadmap. Um, yeah, so we are going to have, you know, some additional uh, uh, base uh, plus stuff, base content um, added in the, in the 2020. A um, lot of different stuff uh, you can check out in, in the roadmap, like I mentioned. Um, but yeah, maybe it's talking about the, uh, the skin and stuff like that. I'm not really familiar with the term uh, base plus right now. I probably should probably check that again. But uh, yeah, that's stuff that's going to be coming up. Um, we do have a lot of really cool um, improvements, particularly to the details of the character's skin uh, coming up in 2020. And I, I think maybe base plus is in reference to that. So I'll just have to make sure. But uh, yeah, um, apologies for not giving a solid answer on that. Um, e even though we, we do have it in the roadmap, sometimes things are a little bit delayed as well. But there's going to be tons and tons of what I can say are really exceptional uh, visual improvements, uh, even further than what we have right now with the digital human shader um, to, to iClone um, uh, graphics. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna go to the next question here. Um, is it possible, Tony asks, is it possible to cross upgrade from iClone to iClone pipeline to get the free plugin? Um, I'm not sure. It really depends on your particular situation. Every account is, is different. So I, I know, for example, if you have certain software, they'll give you um, uh, a discount on other you know, plugins or something like, like that. Um, so just, just uh, I would say I would recommend checking out the upgrade prices you receive when you uh, log into your account. So log into your Realusion account and go to the um, the contents or not the content store, the uh, soft, the product store. Um, and you should be able to find, you know, specific pricing um, for specific upgrades. Cause there's, there's, there's a, it's so, so complicated for the different upgrade prices from one, one point to another. Um, I can't really give you a solid answer on that one. Um, yeah. So Rodney mentioned here, click the camera icon on the, uh, <laughs> on the uh, uh, stupid cam recording here. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead back to that here. There was our uh, recording and uh, where did we have it here? Uh, let's just remove all and do that one more time here just in case. I think it's back to a uh, free one. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? All right. Yes, this was the, uh, oh, I didn't even press record. Oh, hold on. Let's make sure we can see both things at once. 
Oh man, okay. Frame one. Come on, punk. What are you waiting for? Yeah, so there's our uh, record. My sure didn't even stop. Come on, okay. punk. Having what are you waiting for? Sequence. So I'm not even going to bother with this because I'm kind of just going to waste everyone's time here. <laughs> Anyways, I'll just figure out how to do that a little bit later on. But uh, apologies for that, Rodney. It does work, I promise you. Um, okay, so let's go to the next question from D. Um, I got the bonus live for 2D, but it won't install. Any idea why? I have iClone 7 and the last version of Cartoon Animator 4. Um, so D, this, this seems like a question that's probably best uh, sent to the um, customer support team. Uh, so if you wanted to go to customer support, uh, they can really help you out with a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll give you the link in the chat window here. Um, so you go up here to uh, support and customer service. I'll just throw this into the chat window. Oops, I lost my... Uh, Go to webinar panel. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So sorry for sorry for being a dork on the uh, on the sequencer stuff. I seem to have messed that up somehow. Um, but yeah, sorry. The, um, use the uh, use the link in the uh, chat window there um, to contact customer service about that. Since I'm not, I don't have access to your account, so I can't really look at it. Um, Okay, so question from Mick. I bought the iClone pipeline um, to benefit from not needing 3D Exchange, but now I understood iClone pipeline will not be eligible for the free live link plugin. Um, so, anything you need to accommodate those people who bought the pipeline version? Um, okay, so we don't really have um, iClone Pro or iClone pipeline. Uh, Mick, just to clarify, we do have um, 3D Exchange Pro and 3D Exchange Pipeline. Uh, so just, just to clarify for everyone who, uh, who is using like Pipeline with other software, if you want to import um, you know, content into iClone from other software, you only need 3D Exchange Pro. Um, so you can import that in using 3D Exchange Pro. Um, however, if you want to export animations and everything from iClone to other software, then you need 3D Exchange Pipeline. Um, so it's, it's, it really depends on your workflow. I think like a lot of people use iClone as a motion generation tool. And uh, that is, um, you know, exporting to other software like Unreal Live Link, um, uh, like Unity, uh, Maya, Max, whatever you have, that will require you to have the pipeline version of 3D Exchange. So that's, that's you know one of the more uh, expensive uh, pieces of software we have, um, but again, if you are using that pipeline, then you you are required to get that pipeline version of 3D Exchange. Um, we hope to have that integrated into iClone as a plugin in, in the near future as well, um, just so just so you're aware. So it doesn't require you know, having two different types of software, uh, but that's you know still still in the works. Um, so in terms of upgrading and, and uh, transferring over, uh, your situation seems a bit complex. So I can't really comment much more without uh, looking at your specific account. But yeah, that's basically, because um, I know sometimes our software requirements can be a bit confusing. Uh, but essentially all you need to know is that if you are importing to iClone, you only need 3D Exchange Pro. However, if you're exporting, um, you know, uh, motions from iClone, you need 3D Exchange Pipeline. Uh, so just be aware of that. Um, so D is mentioned here. I'm referring to the live face profile for iPhone um, for 2D in the first part of my question. Um, yeah, so I kind of forgot the question. <laughs> uh, let's go back and take a look here because it kind of just erases the question after. Uh, after you uh, get rid of it. Yeah, so D, I mean, again, that's gonna be a question for customer support. 
Um, that's the one I just kind of just answered there, I just realized. Okay. Um, so John asks, uh, is there any way for the phone, uh, the iPhone to be able to capture the audio? Right now, I think you'd, be able, you'd need to be in front of a mic while doing facial mocap. I'm pretty sure there's probably an app that in for the iPhone that you can run simultaneously that will just kind of capture your uh, your audio uh, if you want to use, capture it from an iPhone. Um, I would recommend you know using maybe a, a microphone. Um, although you know you could get some good good audio quality from an iPhone. Uh, you know I've seen it happen. Um, the only thing is that uh, you know obviously microphones on on telephones in general sound a bit tinny, so you're not going to get a lot of the. Uh, the, the the bass and the voice or the, the full capture of the voice um there john um uh, yeah i can't really uh give you a recommendation on that whoops actually i just missed somebody um yeah vladimir asks um, here mentions here um animation and icon takes a lot of memory is there a plugin for compressing the animation file um, not yet, but uh, you know you're more than welcome to uh, because we are opening the API for iClone. You are more than welcome to uh, if you're a Python pro um, to uh, um, you know whip up a uh, a plugin for compressing the animation file. Uh, that would be like super super useful, super helpful. Um, but we don't have that uh, at this time for ourselves, unfortunately. Uh, okay, Rodney asks another question here. Will the CC3 hair update allow creating your own head hair? I haven't got around to doing it in Blender yet. Um, in terms of creating your own uh, hair, uh, we will, it will provide a template from what I know. The new uh, update will have a, a hair template which you can uh, export and import. Um, aside from that, I don't really know a ton about that, uh, that hair pack, I'm sorry, but I do know that it comes with a lot of really cool uh, hair um, templates that you can use um, you know one thing I've found that you know is certainly lacking with our with our with our specific library for real illusion is that we don't have a lot of different hair types um, you know there's probably a couple dozen I think in, in total that we've released since uh, many years ago and of course you know uh, hair is, is one of the main things that have that has been improved especially over the last five years in, in, in real time uh, production. So in terms of good quality hair content, um, not a lot, but again, we are launching some really good stuff um, later this year as well uh, with those templates as well. Um, okay, so thank you for the Tony there. Um, okay, I'm just gonna bunch of comments you have to go through uh okay so um so vladimir mentions uh when exporting to ue4 textures are not reflected correctly especially the alpha channel um vladimir that uh basically is no longer the case um what i would recommend doing is and i know we used to have trouble with the alpha channel exporting from iclone to uh, unreal um using the auto setup tool and everything like that However, with, uh, with LiveLink and with the newest uh, updates to the auto setup tool, uh, we no longer have any, any problems with materials. So uh, what I would recommend doing is upgrading your Unreal project if you can and upgrading iClone to the latest version and, and the plugins as well. Uh, and you, shouldn't, you should no longer have that problem with the Alpha channel there. Um, if, if you do have that problem still, uh, feel free to contact me. Just email me at uh, kai at reillusion.com because that's something that should never happen. Uh, and it hasn't happened to me probably for over a year now since, I, since I've updated. Um, okay, so uh, another question here from Mick. Um, iClone pipeline does need Unreal support. Does, does support Unreal export? Uh, yeah, definitely iClone, pi iClone pipeline. Uh, well, okay, so. Here's, here's where it gets even more complicated. Well, I guess a little bit more complicated. Character Creator 3 pipeline, you're able to export to Unreal. Okay, so if this, this is basically the, the least expensive way, if you're only looking for characters to export to Unreal, definitely all you need is Character Creator pipeline. I want to emphasize this. You only need Character Creator pipeline, uh, which is a very, really, very expensive product 
to export your characters to uh, to Unreal Engine to FBX format and therefore into Unreal Engine. Okay, so you only need that. However, it's when the animation and everything like that comes in, that's when you need 3D Exchange Pipeline. Okay, so there's two there's two pipeline products we have. There is 3D Exchange Pipeline and there is Character Creator 3 Pipeline. So 3D Exchange Pipeline is for animations um, and everything else, basically, uh, you know, props and, and whatnot. If you want to export those into FBX format, OBJ, uh, SKP, whatever, um, you do you do need um, 3D Exchange Pipeline for that. However, if you just want to export your Character Creator 3 character into FBX format, you only need Character Creator 3 Pipeline. Um, so just want to clarify that for everyone because uh, um, I've, I've had that question in the past as well. And people are like, you know, what's what's this 3D exchange for? And you know, why do what's all these uh, different licenses I need and stuff? So uh, I just want to really clarify that for everyone there. Um, that's basically uh, the whole um, whole shebang there for uh, uh, licensing and, and everything. Um, th just just remember, 3D Exchange Seven uh, pipeline is required for export of animation. And uh, that's about it. Um, characters only, you just need a character creator three pipeline. Okay. Um, yeah, I seem I think that seems to be it there. Um, apologies for my boneheaded uh, stuff on the uh, sequencer. I'll have to review that because I haven't, I really never use a sequencer. I, I use it a couple of times when I was uh, learning the product, but uh, um, yeah, it's been a while. Um, but aside from that, yeah. Um, okay. One more question from Peter. Yeah, Smart Gallery was just released, uh, everyone. So uh, I, re I recommend going to Relusion Hub, making sure you upgrade your Smart Gallery. Um, please do so because it's a super cool tool. Um, Relusion Hub here. Let's get our tool all the way there. Um, Smart Gallery for a plugin for iClone. You want to make sure you install that. And to find it, go to Plugins and Smart Gallery right here. OK, you can also use Shift F4 Hotkey. And I uh, just launched a couple tutorials on that, uh, just the basics. Um, we're gonna be launching a tutorial later this week about um, if you're a developer who's interested in publishing your own content, um, I'm gonna launch a tutorial later this week on how to do that. Um, yeah, stay tuned for that. So I think that's about it. I'm gonna just uh, call, call, it a, call it a webinar here. We've gone on for a couple hours and apologies for going a little bit over, overboard on my, on my demo there. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for more tutorials on, on the YouTube channel as always guys. And, uh, really hopefully, hopefully, you, uh, you know, learn something from this webinar today and any questions as well, always feel free to email me, uh, Kai at and I'll be more than happy to answer uh, any questions you guys have. And all, as always fill up a survey and get that big old 10% from the content store, uh, for, for purchasing future content. All right, I think I'm all talked out here, guys. So um, we'll just go ahead and uh, end off the webinar. So thank you so much for attending. I really, uh, really appreciate having all you guys here um, to uh, to learn more about uh, iClone. And and, uh, and again, any, any suggestions you have for future webinars, please uh, put that in the survey so we can uh, help you guys out more with uh, you know using the software and uh, cleanly and smoothly. And uh, yeah, so we'll just go from there. So uh, thanks again, everyone, uh, so much. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you uh, in next month's webinar.